mind if I ask you a few questions? Well, you know, office hours are on Wednesday, but go ahead. We're here today with the celebrated mathematician, prolific weightlifter, and reviewer teacher of 15151, Mathematical Foundations for Computer Science, Professor John Mackey. Professor, thank you for being the first guest here on SES Office Hours. I'm honored. Diet cock. How much are they paying you? They're paying me nothing, but now that you mention it, I think that they could actually be persuaded to give me something. You know, it's the entrepreneurial nature of Carnegie Mellon and Carnegie Mellon students mm -hmm. that continues to enrich me. So we know that the Diet, diet Coke has been a staple for 15151. It's there on the course stuff, it's there on the course hoodies, and it's been an integral part of your curriculum for years. But we'd like to put that to the test. Four cans in front of us right now. We'd like you to identify the Diet Coke, please. Let me just say, aside from identifying the Diet Coke, <clears throat> I'll drink all four because I'm mercenary <laughs> in my diet caffeine cravings. This is a recursive algorithm. We established the base case. This is for all the students who want to exact sweet, sweet revenge on you. <laughs> or saccharin induced revenge. Yeah. Maybe. A little too sweet to be Diet Coke. Also too sweet to be Diet Coke. Let's see. D, the one that you quickly associated wasn't Diet Coke. Wasn't Diet Coke. It was Coke. A also wasn't Diet Coke. It was Coke Zero. Right. Which you said was too sweet. It comes down to B and C. C, which is, uh, which you identified as Diet Coke, is in fact Pepsi, and B is Diet Coke. You know, and students will attest to this, I've been buying Diet Pepsi recently because it's less expensive, and I feel like I've untrained myself. I want this challenge administered again after my second midterm. Professor, tell us about John Mackey the person. Like, where did you grow up? How was Young Mackey like? Yeah, so I grew up working class, not far from here in Youngstown, Ohio. Um, my dad was a machinist, my mom was a nurse. I went to a high school uh, that was a little on the rough side, um, and uh, I did very poorly there. How, how did that experience compare to your time at University of Hawaii? Oh, I mean, well, there was a transition. I left there and actually went to Kent State University, mm -hmm which was required to take me even though I did so poorly. Okay. And um, then things changed because there were people there that were demonstrably smarter than me. Mm -hmm. And I liked being taught by people who cared about me and had things to teach. I was like in my freshman year as you were sort of figuring out how to use the SAT solver to come up with the solution to the Kalo conjecture. So the day that you solved it, what did that feel like? Well, it's kind of interesting because there is really no day you solve it when you're running sort of long computations right. to verify things. You suspect that when you run all the computations and they come to completion that you will have established a result, but you don't know until the final bit has been bought. Mm -hmm. But I will say the day I realized that there was a program to solve or resolve Keller's conjecture in Dimension 7 was right in this very room. And Dr. Tula was standing right there by the board over there, mm -hmm. along with Josh Brackenseek, who's a former math CS double major here. And we were talking about how to describe the cube tilings in a way which was amenable to a SAT solver. And Eula said, oh, the way to do this is as follows. And Josh said, no, it's much, much more complicated. And he said, no, this is one of the interesting things about sad solving. It's not that difficult. Mm -hmm. And Josh and I were just both blown away. And it was then that we realized that there was a compact representation of the problem and that there was a good chance we could analyze all cases. You've accomplished quite a lot other than that. Uh, you boast an AirDOS number of three. Uh, but what do you think 
is has been your biggest academic or like professional failure so my brother and sister were valedictorians of this 3500 person high school uh so they were acknowledged as smart kids and that was one of the reasons why i didn't want to be a smart kid when i got into classes with the same teachers they had they would all say to me oh another macky i must be in for a treat <laughs> or uh, oh i had your brother and sister they were so good and instead of embracing that and trying to you know just maybe be my own person but also be excellent i decided i would go in the opposite direction because the pressure was too much you can be different but that doesn't mean that you have to be the opposite and uh now we have a recurring segment of our show uh this being the first episode my Mac, professor macky are you ready for the lightning round well it seems like i failed the storm round so i believe that lightning is my destiny some say that cs is just applied math fresh of using cs to solve the calculus conjecture would you agree that math is just non applied cs i would agree that math and cs are nothing without each other you once described teaching as stand up intellectualization does that make you the kevin hart of teaching i could only dream of being the kevin hart of teaching kevin hart is one of my personal heroes how do you plan to commemorate the first time one of your kids outlifts you well first of all it's happened oh, wow. there there was a young man who uh maybe didn't do so well on his first exam but was able to deadlift 315 pounds for five sets of five he's already outlifted me so my my prime is past but uh i would have to say that i'm happy to uh hand this torch over to other sincere lifters if any cmu professor could be a wrestler it would be you and if you were wrestling in the wwe what would your stage name be hmm i, I want to give some thought to this cuz it's non trivial hmm this is the first question you given boss thought <laughs> <laughs> yeah the rest of them are, are completely irrelevant this wwe thing has to be done right the tartan truth teller oh wow okay and i would go into the ring and i would say that person is a fraud they have no logic and now you will see the truth my finishing move would be to flummox them with a barrage of propositional uh truth tables finally i'd like to end with a math question sure you once said that at cmu uh and i might be misquoting here but the odds are good but the goods are odd uh you also said that 70% of the students at cmu are in romantic relationships So if both statements are not mutually exclusive and both are true why don't I have a girlfriend professor Mackey Well as is often the case <clears throat> in difficult and thorny situations one can define one's way out of the problem mm-hmm. you don't have a girlfriend because you haven't defined the parameters of the girl you seek carefully enough and as soon as you have decided what the defining properties are then a theorem shall be proven i would like to thank professor mackey for your time and uh hopefully this is the start of a great series it's been great for me thank you <laughs> okay this is not this is not posturing I'm actually a little stunned and saddened here <laughs>